If you have a YouTube automation and you're just not seeing the results or the revenue that you want after posting so many videos, then this video is for you. There could be a number of reasons as to why your YouTube automation channel is not working. And for each of these seven reasons, we have to know each and every one of them so that we can either avoid them or solve them so that you can get your YouTube automation channel to work. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the seven reasons why your YouTube automation channel may not be working and exactly what to do in order to solve these seven problems. So the first reason why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is because there is a consistency problem. So consistency itself just means being consistent in the number of posts that you dedicate towards your YouTube automation channel. So this doesn't mean that you have to post every single day, nor does it mean you have to post every other day. So consistency just means posting regularly on your channel so that there isn't any big gaps between the postings of your YouTube automation channel. So some of my YouTube automation channels, I do post daily on some of them I post every other day and on some of them I may only post weekly so the consistency depends on you but what's most important is that you do have to kind of get those reps in when it comes to your YouTube automation channel with these reps posting videos you're gonna learn a lot more from doing that than you are from gonna be watching YouTube videos or learning as much material as you can online Posting videos is what's gonna get you learning and being consistent with those posts is just gonna allow you to acquire more data. And with that data, you can learn what works and you can also learn what doesn't work. Now, the second reason why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is because there is a niche problem. Now, I'm gonna be going further into detail and in towards how to choose an actually good niche within this video, but I'll save that later on. But in general, there may be a niche problem as far as your YouTube automation channel not working. Maybe your niche is too broad or maybe your niche is too specific. So I've seen a plethora of niches work with YouTube automation. And most of the time when people come to me with the niches of their YouTube automation channel, there are other channels channels within that niche that do work. I've seen all sorts of niches work, but with that though, um, maybe you might just be starting way too broad so that it's hard for your videos to be found, or maybe you might be starting too niche in which there isn't enough demand for the videos that you're targeting. Now, the third reason why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is because your videos aren't unique enough. So it's a very common strategy that people are doing with their YouTube automation channels in which in order to find video topics to make videos on, they just look at other niche related channels. So in other sense, this strategy can somewhat be seen as copying other videos in which if I have a sports channel and I'm looking at other sports channels and I'm just bluntly copying the other videos that they're posting that are working well on their channel, this strategy, it's a very hard strategy to get your YouTube automation channel to work. With your YouTube automation channel, you have to come up with more unique ideas, original ideas, and basically ideas that are in demand that people are actually looking for. If another channel has already posted a successful sports video and you just copy that same exact video, that other channel is always going to be ahead of you. So really try to think of instead of just copying other videos all the time, or instead of just getting inspiration from other videos all the time, try and come up with your own unique ideas. Maybe you want to twist a successful idea that has worked on another sports channel. And with that, you will be able to generate a brand new, fresh, original idea that may work on your channel. One thing to know is that videos that have worked a long time ago or videos that have worked for other channels there is a sense of timing when it comes to YouTube automation as far as what gets published now may not work even though it worked three months, six months, or one year ago. So especially if you're copying videos that have worked a long time ago, there is a sense of timing with YouTube and timing is absolutely crucial in getting videos to work, especially when it comes to news-based channels in which you're targeting a lot of news within your niche. Now, the fourth reason why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is something what I like to call the repackaging problem. If you think about a YouTube video as a package or what's the content is inside the box, think about a YouTube video as a box. What's inside the box is the actual content of your video. Now how you package your video is what matters. So think about the wrapping around the box as like your title and thumbnail. And so that's what I mean by there's a repackaging problem in which the contents of your box or video are good, but the packaging itself, the wrapper, AKA the thumbnail and title may be poor. So one way to separate or basically improve your repackaging when it comes to these videos is to be the only title covering that topic. So make a unique title. One way to verify this is to simply copy and paste the title of your video into the YouTube search bar or even into the Google search bar. If you copy and paste your title into the YouTube search bar or into the Google search bar, and there's like 10 other dozen videos 
videos basically titled the same exact thing as your video, your repackaging likely isn't good enough. If you see thumbnails which are very similar to your thumbnails, your repackaging isn't good enough. So think about this concept. Your video is the content within the box. The wrapping is your title and thumbnail. How you package your video matters. And so try to be more unique, try to be more creative. And again, this can be verified just simply looking at other videos within your niche and just making sure that your thumbnail and titles aren't just like everyone else's. Now, the fifth reason why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is because there is a first 30 second duration problem. So now within YouTube, any video that you post is gonna have this metric called the first 30 seconds. And it basically states how much a percentage of viewers who click on your video are still watching after the first 30 seconds. So in this example here, and one of my videos that I posted on this channel, only 51% of people actually stayed after watching the first 30 seconds. So that's a significant drop. So with the first 30 seconds, I like to tell people that there's a lot of different aspects of a YouTube video that people have to focus on. We're all told to focus on the thumbnail, focus on the title, focus on the video editing, focus on the script. If there's one thing that you have to put your time and attention towards that might be beneficial for your video, instead of trying to spread yourself too thin, try focusing on the first 30 seconds of your video. So with this, these first 30 seconds, you can kind of see again, there's a significant drop. So maybe me personally, I want to focus on the first 30 seconds of my videos and trying to get that to be improved. Studies show that if you can get people to watch the first 30 seconds of your video, they're more than likely to watch the rest of your video. So with that being said, the first 30 seconds, try to add a lot of clips, try to add a lot of typography, make it very well edited, make sure that there's a sound effects, numerous ways in which you can kind of add or improve your first 30 seconds of your video so that you improve the overall viewer duration of your video. Now, reason number six why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is because it's an idea generation problem. Now, this ties to what I discussed before in which the ideas that you generate for your YouTube video, it may not be good enough. It may not be original enough. You're simply just copying other channels. So ways to come up with better ideas is number one, you can either recreate it yourself or think about it yourself in which you're just genuinely coming up with original ideas at the top of your brain. Number two, you can come up with original ideas by looking at non-niche related YouTube channels. So take for example, I'm in sports, maybe I might analyze a tech channel or a celebrities channel and seeing what's working on those channels and seeing if there's any patterns that I can recognize and bring it over onto my sports channel. Another way to come up with original ideas is by looking at social media accounts. So joining subreddits or following niche related Facebook groups or niche related Instagram accounts and and seeing what's happening there as far as what's trending, maybe you wanna come up with a video or create a video based on what's trending on those other social media platforms. Now, the seventh reason why your YouTube automation channel may not be working is because there's a script writing problem. So with the script writing problem, what I like to tell people is that if you're in a niche and you're hiring someone to write the scripts for you, which is what YouTube automation is all about, right? We don't wanna write the scripts yourself, but if you hire someone to write the scripts for you and you're hiring someone to basically be the premise of the video, you should make sure that the script writer who's writing your script actually knows your niche. So this is one of the big changes that I made back in 2023 in which I stopped hiring generic script writers who are only basing their scripts only off research. What I wanted was I wanted more opinions. I wanted more expressions. I wanted script writers who are actually passionate about the subject. And with that, you could actually see it in their script writing. They're actually able to write down their own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. So if there's a big change you can make as to why isn't my YouTube automation channel working, maybe perhaps you wanna hire a script writer who actually knows your niche. So tied to that though, how are you gonna know if someone knows your niche if you don't know your niche yourself? So case and example, I have a channel and let's pretend the NBA, let's pretend I didn't watch the NBA. So how am I gonna know if the script writer actually likes the NBA and actually knows the NBA if I don't know it myself? I think the biggest way this can be solved is by actually hopping on an interview call with them and just talking with them. So getting that innate feeling from actually having a discussion with them on their experience with the NBA, their hobbies with the NBA, what kind of accounts or social media current events do they follow in regards to the NBA. And you can kind of get this feeling as to whether or not they're telling the truth if they do actually know the NBA. So that's what I've done. And I've gone into niches, which I don't know a lot about the niche, but I have hopped into calls and interviewed people who do know the niche. And with that, it just makes for an better experience as far as the quality of your script writing is going to go. So a big change you can make is stop hiring generic people who say that they can write about anything 
Anyone can write about anything. What I want, though, is someone who's actually passionate about a subject and can actually formulate their own opinions and thoughts regarding the subject matter. That's more unique. That's something that's not going to easily be found on Google, and it just leads to a better overall script writing experience. So if in 2023, you've been posting for a couple of months now, you've posted X amount of videos and your YouTube automation channel isn't working, what exactly should you do? My recommendation is to first do not buy traffic, okay? But I think buying traffic is the absolute worst thing you can do with your channel. Don't buy subscribers, don't buy views, don't buy watch hours. Do not do any of that shady stuff. I really, really mean it. It's gonna hurt your channel than it is actually gonna benefit your channel. So it's a common question I always get asked in which should I just buy views or buy subscribers so my channel can at least be monetized? I always recommend do not buy any of those shady stuff. Just focus on the organic growth that YouTube provides and it will just lead you to learning the skills of what it actually takes to running a successful YouTube automation channel. The second thing I recommend you do if after a couple of months you've been posting YouTube automation videos and it's not working, review your niche, okay? So we're gonna spend some time talking about your niche. And so these are just numerous questions that you can ask yourself. Number one, is your niche too broad? There's something like I like to call categories of niches and categories are things that you might term to be actual niches. So for me, categories are like sports, tech, make money online, celebrities, health and fitness, psychology. Those are categories of a YouTube channel. And for me, those are just too broad, okay? It's very, very hard to grow on those channels, but that's just my opinion. What I do believe though, is that if you can narrow down, I think you'll have a lot easier time in growing your YouTube automation channel, which leads to the next question, is your niche too specific? So if your niche is too specific, the downfall to this is that you may be creating videos in which there isn't enough demand. So you kind of have to find a sweet spot. You wanna find a niche where it's not too broad, but you also wanna find a niche where it's not too specific in which there isn't enough demand. So if we take, for example, sports, sports too broad, basketball, it might be niche enough, but maybe you can go a step further and target only Golden State Warriors news. That might be niche enough. So here we are targeting Golden State Warriors fans and it just makes for a great overall niche as far as how specific should you get within your niche for your YouTube automation channel. The third thing I want you to ask yourself is what is your leverage advantage when it comes to your YouTube automation channel? So leverage advantage is this coin of a term that I deem to be like, what is your basically your advantage when it comes to you starting a niche? Do you keep up with the niche? Do you actually know the niche? Have you been playing the niche or participating in the niche for years and you're very experienced in it? So think about your leverage advantage because I feel like everyone watching this video, we all have leverage advantages when it comes to what are our experiences? What have we done before? What are we very knowledgeable about? So case and example is that my leverage advantage is that I keep up with the NBA quite well. I'm very aware with what current events are happening. I'm very aware of what players are getting into trouble. I'm very aware of what players are getting injured, who just won last night's match. So that's my leverage advantage. So when I tell people that I run NBA channels, I'm not really all too afraid for them to kind of quote unquote copy my niche just because I have that leverage advantage. Other means of having leverage advantage is that I have a team who's very versed at creating NBA videos. I've been doing NBA videos for a very long time now, so I have the experience. But again, with leverage advantage, you really wanna think about what is a niche that you can enter in which that you have a particular experience in so that you won't be afraid of your quote unquote competition. And so this leads to my next question that I want you to ask in which, how are you gonna be different from everyone else in your niche when it comes to choosing your YouTube automation channel? How are you gonna have a different sports channel from my channel? So there are numerous ways to approach this in which maybe your thumbnails might be different. Maybe the titling structure of your videos might be different. Maybe the first 30 seconds of your video, you have a very uh, structured way of doing it and that's what's gonna make you different. Maybe your topics are gonna have a certain frame to them that make it different. So there are so many different aspects of a YouTube video which you can kind of tweak and make yourself different to the point in which you're just not gonna be like everyone else. So me personally, Personally, I really try to make sure that I'm the only title that's covering that video and also that I'm the only thumbnail that's similar to that video. Think about how you're gonna be different because it's really gonna make a difference as far as getting your YouTube automation channel to work. Especially again, if you're only just copying other videos and your thumbnails look like this channel's thumbnails and your titles are very similar to this channel's titles, think of a different way to be different when it comes to choosing your niche. The next thing I want you to ask yourself is how are you coming up with topics and are they unique enough? With these topics, as I discussed before, maybe you're coming up with topics 
tricks by copying other channels. That is the number one go-to strategy that a lot of people are doing, but I don't think it's the best strategy. So simply just copying other topics on another channel, it's not the mainframe strategy that's gonna get your YouTube automation channel to work. What's gonna get your channel to work are generating original and unique ideas that are in demand. So it's a two-step process. And the number one is how do you generate these unique and original ideas? You simply just are aware of your niche. So you participate in subreddits related to your niche and Instagram accounts related to your niche and um, Facebook groups related to your niche. And these are all actions that I'm doing personally myself. You're reading articles and news blogs related to your niche. So with that, that is one way to kind of start generating original ideas. Tying that to the in-demand portion, how do you know if your topic is in-demand? It just relates to the kind of the first step as far as seeing what other buzz is happening in other social media platforms or seeing what other traction other channels are getting as well. Coming up with the original idea and then making sure that's in demand, that is what's gonna matter for your YouTube automation channel. Now, the last question I want you to ask yourself as far as you're viewing your niche goes is, are there smaller channels in your niche that are performing well? So it's a very simple concept as far as, if you have a channel that has only, let's say a thousand subscribers, and they're posting videos that are getting over 10,000 views, you can assume that the topics that they're posting are in demand. It's not about how many subscribers the channel has, but rather they're choosing in-demand topics. So the verification here is that smaller channels who are in your niche, who are succeeding, are a good indicator and basically a good green flag light as far as that's a good niche to enter. There's demand, newer channels are actually succeeding in that niche. So maybe you wanna try it yourself. So tying back to the main question again, if you've been posting for a couple months now, a lot of your videos aren't working. The third thing I want you to do is I want you to look at your video and see if there's any patterns of videos that have worked and which videos have not worked. So when you're looking at your channel, what are the outlier videos? What are videos which got more views than your channel has subscribers? Ideally, if you posted, let's say around 30 videos, you should have some outlier videos if you research your topics correctly. You shouldn't have a completely dead channel after posting X amount of videos. There should be some outlier videos which you can build data on. So based on your outlier videos, maybe you wanna recreate more videos similar to that topic. Tying to that though, recognizing patterns is absolutely huge on YouTube. You have to be able to recognize patterns of maybe a thumbnail structure that works or maybe a certain topic that works or maybe a certain titling structure that works. Recognizing patterns is one of the biggest skill sets that you're gonna have to learn when it comes to analyzing your YouTube videos and recognizing patterns is just gonna make coming up with topics 10 times easier. Once you start finding a thumbnail structure that works on your channel, you don't have to think of so many original thumbnail ideas. Once you find a topic that works on your channel, you don't always have to come up with so many different topic and ideas. So my case in point here is that on some of my channels, I'll find a video that works. Let's pretend the video is called Why LeBron James Needs to Retire. If that video works, I'll actually put that video into reproduction like five more times and cover the same exact topic, but I'll repackage it differently. So recall how we talked about repackaging in which it's the title and thumbnail. The video will be about why LeBron James needs to retire, but I'll repackage it like five different times if it works. What if nothing absolutely completely nothing has worked on your channel. So this is like worst case scenario, especially if you're like 90 videos, 100 videos in, and nothing has worked on your channel, you haven't even broken like a thousand views on a single video. Well then you may want to pivot entirely. You gotta learn from something. Even videos that you post that don't work, you've gotta learn from them somehow. So with that being said, number one, you don't wanna be married to your niche. Even if you posted 100 videos, and me personally, I've posted on channels where I posted over 300 videos, and I've still decided to switch niches. So don't be married to your niche. Number two, you have to know when to stop a niche. It's kind of like cutting your losses. You know the niche doesn't work. You're kind of feeling burnt out. And then with that, it's not dependent on how many videos you post. Let's say you post 30 videos. There's no hard set rule that says after 30 videos, if nothing works, you have to switch niches. You have to build that innate feeling of like, okay, am I seeing progress? No. Am I seeing progress? Yes. If you're really not seeing progress, then yes, you may want to pivot niches. I like to teach like there's like this internal and external validation method. And number one, the internal validation method of knowing when to switch niches is asking yourself, do I still picture myself running this YouTube channel three months, six months, one year, five years down the road? Because YouTube itself, YouTube automation especially, 
It's a marathon. We're in it for the long term. It's not a sprint. We're not looking for quick gains. We're looking for a nice YouTube automation channel that's established. Second is the external validation. So seeing other channels. Are you seeing smaller channels work within your niche? And if so, that's a good green light indicator like what we discussed before. But if you're not seeing any channel, let's say for example, in the health niche that's as small, that's working, then it might be a hard niche to get into. More of a miscellaneous tip, but if completely nothing has worked on your YouTube automation, channel it might be because you start with the pre-monetized channels i absolutely do not promote pre-monetized channels just because i feel like there's so many problems with them and so with it i always recommend starting on a brand new channel growing your channel organically and really learning the skills of what it takes to run a successful youtube automation channel so if you decide to pivot completely you may want to go into a niche where you have leverage advantage as we discussed before what is your leverage advantage compared to other people what is something in which you don't mind telling people straight in the eye what niche you're in. Me, I'm in sports. I'm in the NBA. But I'm that confident that even if you go into the NBA, my channel will still succeed itself. Even so, there's a lot of room for you other YouTubers on YouTube. The second thing is that you want to ask yourself what current events or things do you just keep up to date with? What articles are you always reading? What blogs are you always keeping up to date? What emails are you receiving? Those also might lead to good niches for YouTube automation channels. With me, the niches that I always try to go into are niches where you can anticipate something, where there's upcoming events. So I'll show you an example here. I like to go into niches where you anticipate stuff, where there's upcoming events, where there's news, just because I feel like it's a great way to get viral videos. So here's a channel called Clean Tech, and basically what they cover is upcoming car news. So if you look at their past 30 days, they're getting 340,000 views per month, and they're only posting 12 videos per month. If you look at their videos, you can kind of see that they're targeting the GM brand, Ford, Toyota, GM, Ford, Ford. So again, they've already recognized the pattern of what type of videos to post. Here we have Ford, but basically this is just all news as far as targeting upcoming cars, news that just happened. And for them, it's working. 300,000 views per month. It's a great revenue stream. I'd say like a couple thousand dollars. Here's a channel called Miss K Drama. This is the niche in which it's in the Korean entertainment industry. And if you look at their stats, this channel is absolutely crushing it with over 7 million views per month. So what they do is that they target trending TV shows or Korean pop industry things that are happening. So right now, they're targeting a lot of this series called Singles Inferno just released a couple weeks ago. And so what they're doing is that they're targeting a lot of videos that are related to that series that just launched. So with it though, they're absolutely crushing it. And every time a new Korean drama series or Korean TV show uh, releases on Netflix, they're more than likely gonna start creating videos related to it. So it just makes for a great overall niche. And this is a great way to build a YouTube automation channel, again, with the anticipation of upcoming slash news. This is a channel called Bopping. And again, they follow the trend of targeting upcoming TV shows and movies. In the last 30 days, they've got 2 million views, which is well over $10,000 per month. They're posting about 20 videos per month. But if you look at their videos, you can kind of see like whatever mainstream TV show is happening, they create videos targeting that TV show. So here, Percy Jackson was released a couple of weeks ago. So you can kind of see that all the videos that they're posting about Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Again, the anticipation of upcoming TV series, it's a great niche to go into. People might think like the trend that is eventually gonna die, but do realize that once Percy Jackson stops being popular, there is, is going to be another TV series that this channel can capitalize on that is trending out in pop culture. So a great niche overall that you can learn from. But now I wanna go over what would I do if I were starting from scratch with YouTube automation? So the first thing is I would choose a niche. And as I've said before, targeting a niche in which there's news, targeting a niche in which there's something upcoming, targeting a niche in which there's something that you can anticipate, that's like one of the check marks for that what works as a great niche for me. The second thing is making sure that whatever niche you choose, that you have a leverage advantage in. So at least know something about the niche. And if you don't know anything about the niche, then you're gonna have to learn about the niche, okay? So this involves actually following social media platform accounts that are related to your niche. And this also involves making sure that you're proactive as far as reading about the current events within your niche. So whatever niche that is that I choose, whether it's TV shows or 
for sports or basketball. The second thing I do is hire a team. Now with team management, I use this tool called Task Force and Task Force for me, I've been using it for four years now and it is just an all-in-one, very collaborative and robust software to, for running YouTube automation channels with your team. So there is a free link to check out down below in the description, but hiring a team and getting them on board with Task Force would be the next step that I do. The third step is that I would get the videos created. With the videos being created, you wanna spend at most $100 per video. And this is like the stage in which I like to call it the trial stage in which you don't wanna spend so much money per video just to trial out videos. I'd say if you can get them under $60, that would be ideal. So with these trial videos that are costing you $60, you're basically trying to find what's gaining traction on your channel. Once you've created the videos, you do wanna publish them out. And with the published videos, eventually start reading the data. So with the data, you wanna start seeing what works and you wanna start seeing what doesn't work as far as what you can stay away from just because you know it's not working on your channel. So YouTube automation itself, it really boils down to two main reasons which I've seen why people don't succeed in their YouTube automation channel. I'd say the number one thing is that they're not consistent with their channel. They basically just stop posting or they just give up overall. So consistency is absolutely key and me personally, I'm guilty of having stopped posting on channels in which I've started. So consistency, maybe you might need a team to help you out, but being consistent on your channel is going to matter. The second thing is the angle or uniqueness problem in which the niche that you're targeting it's like other channels that are already on YouTube. So what you wanna do is that you wanna be more unique with your video topics chosen, coming up with original ideas as we've discussed before and how to come up with them. But with it though, those are the two biggest problems. If you want a more in-depth guide on how to actually start a YouTube channel in seven steps, make sure to watch this video next.